Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. He said we ought to rejoice and be glad in him. And I thank God for his omnipresence today. And we want to usher, usher in the Holy Spirit this morning. And let allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever God has in store for us today. But I do believe this is a day of promise. This is a day of miracles today. So if you will bow with me, I am going to pray because we want the Holy Spirit to come into this place today. We want his angelical angels to be ministering all around. And for those who are listening and watching this broadcast, I just want you to raise your hand in, agree with, in agreement with me today that the Holy Spirit is going to move in this place today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you, Father God, for this day that you have set aside. And we know that this is the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice, and we're just going to be glad in Him. Father, I ask, Lord, you would just step me aside as the Holy Spirit moves within me. I ask, Lord, that you would touch my tongue, and let, let nothing be spoken that is not of you, Father. And Lord, we just pray this morning that every listener that's listened to this broadcast be touched by you this morning. Let it be a day like never before, Father. And Lord, we just give you the glory today, Father God. We give you all the honor, which all the honor is due today. Father, we just stop from when we pause and we say we thank you this morning just for being the great I am God. And we know that your grace is sufficient. And Father, we just owe it all to you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be holy and acceptable unto thee, thy reasonable servant, in Jesus' name. Well, God is good, and I'm glad to be here today, and I'm glad to be out, and I know that we've been in, and I know that we all felt like we're just uh, clashing in on one another, but I'm glad to be out today and just speaking what God has given to me this morning. And this morning, I want to talk about something that I believe is so important in the season that we're in. We're in a setback, but, we're, but guess what? We're in a comeback time. So God is, it, he, he's revealing the miracles. He's revealing his word. And, and he's allowing us to be together for a reason. And I believe there's a purpose in everything that God does. I believe... Excuse me. I believe even through this coronavirus that is going on now, that is a purpose. And our purpose too together is to come together as allowing us to release the authority and power that God has put upon us. It's, a, it's allowing us to read his word and come together as one, being prayerful with one another. It's allowing us to regroup, refocus, and be imparted in your word. So I want to talk about today understanding the power and authority that God is releasing. Now Jesus made the promise to give us the power and the authority and I want to bring your attention to the book of Matthew in Matthew 16 and 18 when he said to Peter and I tell you that you are Peter on this rock and I will build my church in the gates of hell she will not overcome it. And he said again, and I tell you that you are Peter on this rock, and I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Whatever God does, God, God does it with such a supremacy. God does it in such an authority that no man can take it apart. When God opens a door, no man can close it. Jesus was going to build his church. The church was going to advance. The gates of hell would never withstand against it. When God does something, God always says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we're talking about authority and we're talking about power. When God, God has the authority, but he gives us the power. So he gives us the power to release that authority. So why should we fear? And as I was in my prayer time thinking, why should we fear? When we know that God is in control. And God is omnipresent. God is the beginning. He's the end. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's our healer. God is the way. He is the light. And he's even the salt of the world. So why should we fear? You see, when we come into calamity, we bring fear in. 
when God is already in control. So today, what we're going to do today, we're going to understand how the power and authority will calm down anything that is not in balance with God. Amen? I get excited when I talk about the power and authority that Jesus releases because sometimes we're thinking how long it's going to last, but we forget about who's in control. So Jesus is saying that he is the greater. He is the greatest and that he is who he said he is. His power is greater than the power of the enemy. When there is head-on conflict between power of the enemy and the power of God, the power of the enemy will lose every time. How do we then live and walk in this power and authority? You have to speak to yourself. You gotta say, self, I am in control because everything I say and do is under the blood of Jesus. So we have to speak to ourselves. The world we live in has two realms. It has a natural realm and it has a spiritual realm. We need to be able to know how to live in the spiritual realm in a way that affects the natural realm. So instead of the spiritual realm only affecting me, I need to be living in a way that affects the spiritual realm, which in turn affects the natural realm. So how I live in the spirit will affect how I live in the natural. So I have to speak to myself that uh, all things through God are possible. Forgetting the things that are behind me and stretch forth to the prize of the high calling, which is Jesus Christ. When we speak to the authority in the spiritual realm, it allows us to live victorious in the natural realm. Amen? Amen. So as I read Paul's amazing statement in 1 Corinthians 4, 19-20, I began my personal journey in understanding the power in which we live. Paul says in this verse that he's coming to Corinth to see the teachers that are there. Now remember the story in Corinthians. Paul was going to Corinth, and he says, I'm not just going just to see the teachers, but I'm going to see what the teachers are doing. So when Paul went there, and he's not coming to just hear their words, but he's coming to see the power in their lives. For the kingdom of God is not just words, but it's also power. So it's power in the word. And the Bible speaks to us and it says, we should not only be hearers, but also doers of his word. If we speak with the power of the tongue, then the action should follow the power in which we speak. And I gave examples some months ago about the electricity and how we have the power. The power company generates the power. It delivers it to your house. But it's not your power. But, uh, but it's under your control. You don't call the power company and ask them to turn the lights on. No, they won't do it. They generate the power, but it's under your command. So when you flip on the switch on the wall and command the power to work, does this mean you are the power source? No. You can put a light bulb in your mouth. Is it going to come on? No. You aren't the power source, but you are the one in control of what the power does. You can plead with the power company, but they won't flip the switch for you. You have to assume your authority and acknowledge the power is in your command. So it's just like, again, the power switch. Unless you turn it on, you'll never know the power and authority that God has given. So I want you to think about that today. All the time that we have, and we're dealing with situations every day, think of the power source. You are the power source. God has given you that authority. And all you have to do is switch it on, or you can switch it off. And God is, God is allowing us to switch it on. What a mighty God that we serve. He has given us instructions, and we're to abide by those instructions. And I know times when it seems like it's so hard right now and things seem so dim right now, but remember God is always in control. God is that God is who he said he is. And his word declares again, I am that I am, and my grace is sufficient. It's awesome to hear and know that we have the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we had asked for. So I asked this question from the Lord. 
And I was in my prayer time. I said, Lord, why, why are we going through so much? You're giving yourself uh, to us in many situations, but yet we're still not pleased. And God told me in his word as I was praying, the Holy Spirit ministered to my spirit. He says, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He said, I am the beginning and I am the end. And he says, fear not, my child, I am with you. And as I began to listen to the words of the Lord, I began to understand that it's not nothing we're going to do in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, we're waiting on a mighty, mighty move of God. So business is as usual when it comes to being in the spirit realm. Again, what we see in the naked eye in the natural is not what we see in the spiritual eye. Because the spiritual eye will tell us that we can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. The naked eye will say, oh, we're going another day. Oh, we're going to see another, you know, uh, article about, you know, this. Or we're going to watch the news. They're going to say this. But my spirit says that God says, I'm in control. And I want you to be positive today. And I want you to know that when you wake up in a new day, it's another day of blessings from God. So I heard this question from the Lord. You're giving yourself uh, to me through by your word. Will you give yourself to me through my power? So at the moment, I, didn't, I, didn't, I did not know what it meant. couldn't relate with it. But pretty soon the Lord started me on a journey. And on this journey, I began to understand the power, more of the power of God. Our lives should be characterized by the power of God. People should know you by the fruit that you bear. God's power and authority in Ephesians 1 and 9. And it said Paul talks about his greatness of power toward us. Not just prior to this, Paul said, I pray. That a spirit of wisdom and revelation will be given to you. And he was praying that it would happen in three areas. One of the areas had to do with the power of God. So what Paul says, Paul says, I pray that you begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe. This is the same mighty power which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of his father. And he says, far above all rule, and authority, power, and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. So God is trying to remind us again who is in control. He is trying to remind us is that haven't I given you the authority? He has the power, but he's given us the authority to move. It is important that we close ourselves with his power. God can use a wounded soldier. He said we ought to dress ourselves in a spiritual realm every day. Are you wearing the breastplate of righteousness? Do you have your sword ready today? Are your shoes short with the preparation of the gospel? Are you ready to be in position? Again, God cannot use a wounded soldier. The church is to be carrying on the ministry that Jesus began the gospel. That's why he says, as the Father sent me into the world, I'm sending you. The word would never stop. No one could stop the word of God. We may not meet at a physical building, but God's word would travel the world. That was the light, the last night, and the end of his earthly ministry. He said, I'm now sending you out the same way the Father sent me out. We are extensions of God's hands. We are mouthpieces for God. So God is allowing us to continue to spread the gospel. He's continued to give us time that we can sit with one another and we can pray and we can intercede. We still shine our light at nine o'clock at night so that the world may see that we're continuing what God has in store for us. He sent the Holy Spirit to be the carpenter and the one by whom he would carry his life. And I'm so excited today of how God uses people. He uses the ordinary things and bring them to the supernatural things of God.
He allow us to, to use the computers to get his word out. He will allow us to be in circumstances where we're still practicing our social distance, but at the same time be a light of the world. So God is still allowing that door to be open. So we need to get ready. And we need to talk with more authority and power like never before. We need to let the world know that when calamity comes, that God is still in control, but he has given us the authority to speak, to heal, to send his word over in distant lands. We need each other at this time. We, need, we are in a season now where God is saying in this season that if we come together as Christians, as Christians, that we will see a better world. Because sometimes when things happen, it's for change. It's for us to go into the next season. We have to open up our spiritual eyes and realize that we are somebody in Christ Jesus. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper because we are more than conquerors. God is such an awesome God today. God is awesome. The reasons Jesus' power is released and available so much more in the Gospels than it is for us is that Jesus was sensitive to make sure that everything he did, he said, was in obedience to his Father's will. No matter what the situation he looked like, God, Jesus was always in obedience to his Father. He lived in the will of God. He didn't have his spirit of independence. He didn't have a spirit of rebellions. He had a spirit of submission to his Father. And that's the same walk that we need to walk today, is be submitted to God. So each of us should ask, do I have any independence in my life? Do I have any lack of submission? Do I have rebellion? Jesus understood how important it is that he did not allow rebellion to be in his life. Rebellion is sin, and rebellion is witchcraft. So it's time for a checkup. It's time for us to take this time that we're not going to the physical doctor, but we need sometimes go to the spiritual doctor and ask again, am I in rebellion? Am I lacking sensitivity? Have I done what you have required of me to do? It's time now to stop and think and get in line with what Christ would do. Jesus ministered under God's authority. We must be sensitive that we're living in proper relationship and alignment with God's authority. God never stops. It's us. It's we that stop. But God never stops. As the Father sent the Son in the world, the Son sends us in the world. And I want to repeat that again for those of you who are listening. As the Father sent the Son into the world, the Son sends us into the world. If I'm on earth with the mission of the Father to do the works Jesus did, then I will because Jesus made a promise that not only will I do the very work that he did, but that he did, but I'll do greater works than he did. So I am excited to know that God trusts us and that we can continue the work of the ministry. There are many souls that still need to be saved. There are many souls out there that are not living and lining up their self with Christ. We can always be that vessel that God has called us to be. He's calling on you and he's calling on me to be greater than we were. Before we even got into the COVID, God is, he was calling us way before then to get in line with him. And to be steadfast and immovable and always abiding in the word of God. This is a time of submission. This is a time that we check ourselves and ask God, again, God, am I living right? Am I doing what you have called me to do? Can I go even farther? This is the time that we get into the word of God and understand his instructions. We cannot give directions if we don't understand the instructions. It's time to pray. It's time to labor before the Lord. There's a big difference between having authority and having power. A distinction between power and authority is found in the book of Luke, in Luke 4.36. And all the people were amazed and said to each other, What 
is this teaching. What authority and power he gives or give orders to evil spirits. And they came out in Luke 9 and 1. Authority is the capacity, and I want you to really get this, authority is the capacity we have due to our position. I have the authority of God in me due to my relationship with Jesus Christ, which tells us that we must have that relationship with Jesus Christ. We must accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. You cannot have the power unless you're connected to the power. So uh, Christ says he's the vine and we're the branches. So we got to make sure that we're connected to the power. Fear has the same effect. When the Israelites had the option of going to the promised land, they heard all about these giants and they were all in fear and and then in judgment and then judgment came god called them an evil generation because of their fear sometimes we look at fear as being unfortunate while god calls it evil and wicked so i so what i did is i changed my perception of what may seem to us to be unimportant issues which in reality are very important issues if god's authority and power are going to be released in our lives so this is why it's important to know who you are in Christ Jesus and the power and authority we have. We're sitting and we're waiting for something to happen or someone else to do something. Why not you today get up and be accounted for? Why don't you do what God has called you to do? God can't use an empty vessel. You have to fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit and work in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is working through you. And it has to be God's divine instructions. So take this time that we have and don't use it as a vacation time. Don't use it as a time of more, uh, moaning and, and grumbling. But use it for a time to get to know God. To have your relationship with God even more. God is not looking for religion, but he's looking for relationship. He's looking for us to go forth. He's looking for those who can stand up when there's calamity. When things are dark, he's, what he says in his word, I am the light of the world. When things seem like uh, nothing is going in our direction, all we got to do, the Bible says, look up to the hills which cometh my help, which cometh from the Lord. So this is an opportunity, and I think it's a grand opportunity to know who we are for Christ, where we're we going, and how we're going to get there. And the only way we're going to know how we're going to get there is having that relationship with Christ, walking in his footsteps, having the authority and the power that God has put upon us. And sometimes I look back and I say, God, he's, he's looking down on us. And he's, and he's asking us a question. Why are you sitting? Why are you in that place when I have given you the tools that are needed to be successful? I have given you the power to tread on the evil things of the world. So when God looks at us, he looks at us and he wonder. and I, I'm using my spiritual imagination, he's looking at all the people in the world and looking to see what are you doing for him. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So it's a self-examination time when authority and power meets together. I got up this morning just overjoyed because of the Savior that I serve and being reminded after you've fallen so many times, it's time to get up. Jesus gives his authority to us. We were transformed, transferred, I'm excuse me, transferred from the kingdom of darkness and death to the kingdom of light and life. I was transformed from the kingdom, the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of life. You were transferred also. So at the moment, you and we and us received Christ as our Savior, who were raised up and seated with Jesus Christ in the right hand of the Father, which means the authority of God that is in Jesus Christ is shared with us. So authority and power is given in many places. 
And as I look at the Bible and I read Matthew 16 and 19, Jesus gives the keys of the kingdom to Peter. The key referred to the authority. We see the exact same thing in Matthew 18, James 5, 17 and 19, just to give you a few scriptures. It says, Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly, and it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. See, we have even gone into a year. And this is th three and a half years that Elijah prayed for rain. A lot of times we have to re be reminded of these people in the Bible to see where their strength was and to see how they endured. We haven't even gotten to six months yet. But yet Elijah went through three years praying earnestly. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced crops. Why? Because he did not give up on God. And I want to leave you with that example, because Elijah was a mighty man. And I can see in the, in the spiritual realm, because his relationship with God, he didn't give up. But in the, if you look at it in the natural realm, we will look at ourselves and say, wow, this has been long enough. There's no hope. But yet, God had a plan for Elijah, just like he has a plan for the world today. We're coming out of the situation that we're in. We're coming out. But a setback is always ready for a comeback. And my prayers is that when we come back, that we'll come back more victorious. And that we'll come back as the leaders that God has called us to be. And we come, and as we come back, that we'll come back with a strong, with stronger faith. Our prayer line will be stronger. We'll have more love for one another. We'll learn to work together as a whole because this is what God is calling us to be—a mighty nation, and we are a mighty nation. What we need to get a hold of, what we need is revelation, and that we receive the authority and power of Jesus Christ. So it's not. It's not a power and authority that I have just for the sake of having. It's a power and authority I have for the purpose of the kingdom's mission. And, I, and it says, I'm on and it's over every power and authority. So it's not to, to boast, but the power and authority is to complete God's mission that he has. Until he comes back, we are still on the mission. So I challenge you today to stay on the mission, stay on the battlefield, stay in the spiritual realm, because the spirit realm will give you directions, and it will give you the authority and power that you need in this season that we're in. If this room was filled with light, and behind us um, was a room filled with darkness, and if we open up the doors, do you think the darkness will come in and put out the light in this room? Or with the light in this room, go into the other room and dispel the darkness. When Jesus would show up, demons immediately could not handle the light and the presence of God. In the same way as believers today move more into a ministry of power and authority, the demonic spirits are going to manifest. And when they reveal their, we have power and authority over them. We know how to set the captives free and how to release the prisoners. And, that, and that's what we have seen happen. It's a joy and a delight. We see people transform. We've seen miracles. They are transformed because they've been set free. We have seen miracles for World for Jesus International. We have seen miracles. We have spoke what God have us to speak. We have seen the blind see. We have seen those who, could, who were deaf began to hear. We've seen limbs begin to grow. We've seen those which um, the doctor said they will not and they will not live. We have seen them live. We have seen the dead rise. God is a good God. And if we use all that God has given us, what a mighty nation this would be. When Paul was in prison, he was bound in the physical realm. But in the spiritual realm, Paul set an example, and he set the bar high, letting us know then that we are more than conquerors, and there was no weapon that was formed against him that shall prosper. And let me just go on just for another moment. 
Even the woman with the issue of blood for 14 young, long years, she suffered. But her purpose and her mission was not over. And she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I should be made free. So she pursued the mission that God has in store for us. And we have to look at the same way in the spiritual realm. We have to keep going because what you see in the natural will be your setback. But your comeback will be what you see in the spirit realm, which is that I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. So those of you who are watching this broadcast, I want you to know today that you are more than conquerors. You are a member of the royal priesthood. We are sons and daughters of the Most High King. And we have something that a lot of people want and don't have, but God has given this to us. So don't abort the mission which God has in store for you. Take this time that we have to build upon the mission, to build upon what God has for you. Because God is calling on you right now. God is watching you and God is, is wondering, uh, not wondering, but God is saying to you and reminding you, you are my son and you are my daughter and you are heirs of the high, my, of the uh, righteous God. And you're a member of the royal priesthood. So let's get in position. Let's take our proper stand. Let's know who we are in Christ Jesus. And I guarantee you, and I charge you and challenge you today, that the best is yet to come. And I want you to raise your hands for, for wherever you are. If you're sitting in, in your living room or you're sitting outdoors, wherever you are, just raise your hands right now. Because raising your hands is a sign of deliverance. It's a sign of reverence, uh, reverence, excuse me, to God. It's a sign that I surrender to my will, but I raise my hand into your will. And we want to pray today, and we want to release that spirit. Because the God is 24 hours, he's a 24, excuse me, <clears throat> God is a 24 hour God. And he hears and he answers all of our prayers. So I want you to get up where you are. Even gather your family members where you are. Let's come into unity today. Let's come into unity. And let's pray for one another. Dear heavenly and gracious Father. Father, we pray for all those who are listening today, Father. But Father, we know that you are a God of a second chance. And God, I ask today, Father, that you lay your hands upon them. Let them feel your Holy Spirit. Let them feel your presence, O oh God. Father, I ask, Lord, that you will go into every home, O oh God. And Lord, take their attention back to you, Father. Let them have a closer and a stronger bond and relationship with you. Touch that head of that house right now, Father God. Let him be in position, O oh God. Lord, touch every member of that house every child father let them know father that what the natural could take away that father god you can give us double oh god let them realize father god that what they see with the with the naked eye is not the plan for the future father let them realize father god that you are the beginning of each plan you are the end of each plan let us stand and continue to move oh god let us continue to stay on the mission oh god let us not abort father god but let us be a part of what you what you're calling us to do father we ask father god instead of hating one another and instead of talking about one another father that we will speak love father yes. to one another and that we will come together, oh God. Let us be an example of who you called us to be. Let our light so, sh so shine that others will see the good in us. Let our fruit be fruitful, God. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, let us, Father God, accept what you have given us, Father God. Let us use the tools that you have given us, Father. And we know, Father, each tool that you have given us will just bring us higher, Father God. Lord, let us stand like never before. And if we've done anything wrong, I ask, Lord, you forgive us right now, oh God. We ask, Father God, that you would cleanse us, Father God. We ask, Lord, that you would blow into our nostrils today a breath of fresh air. Go into the hospitals, Lord. Touch those who are ailing in their bodies, oh God. Let them know, Father God, that you are still in control, Father. When the doctors leave, leave off, Father, I ask, Lord, that you pick up, oh God. 
Bless those, Father God, who are on the front line every day, God. Give them protection, oh God. We ask, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that the joy that you have given us, Father God, that nobody could take it away, Father, that only you can give us the supernatural joy, oh God. But let us rise up, Father God. Let us rise up today, God, not tomorrow, not tonight, but right now, God. Let us rise up to be a nation that you're calling on, Father God. Bless those afar. Bless those in foreign countries, O oh God. Bless those who lost their loved ones, O oh God. Give them peace. Give them comfort right now. Bless the Tapua family, O oh God. Give them comfort right now, Father God. As far as they lay rest, their, their father. And we know that another king is coming into heaven, Father God. And Lord, we ask Lord, that you surround that family, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And Father, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for our friends and, and loved ones, Father God, that were connected to our school, that, Father God, that you continue, Heavenly Father, to let the treasures that they left with us, that we continue to use them, Father God. And then, Father God, we just thank you right now for, for those who are continuing to stand despite of the situation, despite of what the neck and eye looks at, Father God, but in the spirit realm. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Because you said the best is yet to come, Father. And thank you for allowing us to be steadfast and immovable and always abiding in the Word of God. And from World of for Jesus International, we thank you for listening. We thank you for watching this broadcast. And I want to leave you this word. Try God. And let us hear from you soon. In Jesus' name, amen.